Welcome. The Qantas flight from Australia to Argentina did make a big, big problem for the Flat Earth uh, fanatics. Uh, Globusters have another take on that one. Sailboats? Um, yeah. You will understand better when you've seen the video. Let's start. First of all, I want to thank all my patrons, members, donors, and subscribers. All of you are important for me. Thank you very much. Okay, let's have a look at one of Globebusters' latest shows. Planes, I think, can get up faster than we think. And also, I showed articles on my show the other day. There's already been articles that such and such plane has broke the sound barrier, such a, because with the winds aloft, and that's just in the north when the south is many times faster. But in the north, planes will catch that stream and they'll get uh, places a lot faster and they'll break records. And then there ends up that their miles per hour was 950 or 970. But that's because they were going under the Mach and then Mach 1, and then they get the wind with them. So, but boats cannot really, as far as I know, aren't going to move a lot faster than we think, right? Like a, a cruise ship that goes 22 miles per hour is not going to bust out and do 40. You know, it's just, I don't think it's possible. So when you look at boats, let's start with this um, Antarctic Cup race, right? Which is what people always send me to. This is the cup race that they have once a year. They show the path of the race this year. So basically they will race around this track. They don't go below the 60 degree marker. They race around this and then there's a world record. And the current world record you'll see here is 102 days, 56 minutes, 50 seconds. Okay. So remember that they sail the entire time. They don't take naps. They don't, you know, as far as like somebody will sleep, somebody will sail, but not, they, they are always moving. Jared, a really great start. The one who have that world record is the Russian adventurer Fedor Konyokov and he was sailing alone. I don't think he was awake all that time. So at 102 days, we'll do a 102 times. Let me get this up. We'll keep track here. So 102 times 24 hours equals 2448. That's the amount of hours that this thing was traveling. And it did a circumference of 16,000. Or does it say the miles? Uh, I think it's 16,000 miles. I don't see right off here. It's a nonstop race around 14,000 nautical miles. I don't see it right. Here. It should be about 16,000. Let's just say it's 16,000 and we'll come back. But 2448, so that's the hour. So we're going to go 16,000 divided by 2448. And we get um, 6.53 miles per hour. Okay. So that's how fast he was averaging to get around 16,000 miles in 2,448 hours. Okay, great. Now let's look at what the circumpolar uh, current is. Okay, it's the biggest current in the world. It is the fastest moving current. Um, here you go. The Antarctic circumpolar current flows clockwise, okay, which is the way the race goes, which is the way people circumnavigate the world. You have a hard time doing it the other way. Um, and when I say circumnavigate, I mean on the outside track, obviously. Uh, and it talks about it goes west to east around Antarctica. Anyway, when you look into it deeper, you can figure out that the average speed is about 2.5 miles per hour, sometimes three. So we can now take that 6.53 miles per hour that we said the guy was averaging, and we can minus from that 2.5 because that's the current speed. So he's moving without even moving 2.5 miles per hour. Therefore, his boat is only actually going four miles per hour around the world okay Jared you're really an expert in sailing you must have been sailing all your life 
that current is a deep sea current and it's uh, moving from the surface to 8 to 1000 meters. At the surface where the boat is you have other much stronger forces. The wind make currents go in other directions, you have waves and if you have noticed it, this boat was driven by the wind. So your mathematics is worth nothing, dear sir. Okay, so now we find out who this guy is, and he races a, let's find his name here, I think. Uh, yeah, he races his 85-foot open monohull trading boat. So I go search and what, you know, find the fastest 85-foot monohull, and you find out that the fast the boat goes, uh, 36 knots, that's 41 miles per hour. Uh -huh. So a boat that goes 41 miles per hour has the world record for circumnavigating the ocean while traveling four miles per hour. Okay. So if you believe that, that's fine. But that's what happens when you've lied, when you're lying to people about distance, the guy probably got back. And if you asked him for all he knows, he was going four miles per hour because he traveled 16,000 miles and it took him X amount of time. That's how what speed. Well, is, he right? probably, he probably just divided the math and you know, he, he divided the time into the distance and said, right. wow, I thought I was going a lot faster than that, but it only says four miles per hour. And there we have Bob, 15 degrees per hour, Nadell. You two are so stupid. A sailing boat can't sail in a straight line all the time. It depends on winds and so on. Often they have to sail zigzag. So the distance traveled it much further than the one uh, that you are cal calculating on. Oh, so dumb. And the top speed on a sailing vessel, it's on perfect conditions. Oh. Right, right? I'd love to talk to I bet you you would say something like that. Uh -huh. so, and then all of a sudden you realize there's not a lot of difference you have to do. So if instead we know that there's 2,448, uh, well, let's say... Some people have said that the circumference is 60,000. I don't know. I don't know if things are that big down there. Maybe 50,000, but let's just say 50,000 just to see what speed would somebody have to go to complete that. And he's not all the way at the edge, remember? So the edge would be 50,000. He's not even past the 60 degrees. He's just doing a circle at about the 60 degree mark. So let's say it's 50,000. Yeah, they're usually usually in like the mid 50s yeah, so or look, thereabouts. Yeah, we'll go one more time and look at the, where was the boat? Here we go. So you'll see that they're not even getting, this is the 60 degree line here, this white line. And so they're staying above that. So right below uh, Australia, they do have to duck down obviously in South America. Anyway, so it's not even the outer edge. So let's say it's 50,000. So we've got 50,000 divided by the 2,448. And that comes out to 20. So even at that, it's only, the boat's only going half the speed that it's capable of. That seems to make more sense to me than a boat that maxes out at 40 breaking a world record going four. It's just ridiculous. It's like a car breaking the world record for the fastest trip around a track. And it, you know, it actually goes 400 miles per hour, but it only went four. What are you talking about? Why would it, why would it do that? Wouldn't somebody just come and break the record easily by going eight miles per hour? Same thing is true yeah, with these no boats. Doubt. Why isn't somebody breaking the 102 day record by going and I don't know, putting your foot on the gas pedal at the boat? You know, you might move a little faster than four miles per hour. The gas pedal on a sailing boat is the wind. How stupid can you get? Bob Nodell and you are two big fools. And uh, so that just tells me that this area here is much more vast and nobody would ever know. It would be impossible for a sailor to know because they're going to base everything off of known land distances and those when i say known it's what gps gives you gps gives you uh these answers so when you figure out that yeah that boat fastest goes 41 miles per hour and yet this guy's breaking the record going four a sailboat like this have other methods than gps to measure the speed a common equipment it's a through hull speed and temperature transducer and it's like a wheel that moves by the passing water. So then you get your speed. Okay, that was Globebusters in their full glory. 
What a bunch of fools. We move on. Okay, this must be some kind of record. As usual, the Globusters talking about things they know nothing about. They are guessing and they are trying desperately to fit reality into their imaginary flat earth fantasies. It's quite hilarious. I uh, <laughs> I think I must watch a bit more of door, those uh, fools uh, shows. Okay, that was all I had for you this time. If you liked it, please become a member, subscribe and hit the notification bell or just come back next time I'm releasing a video. Goodbye.